Life was never easy in the tunnel. I live alone in an abandoned section that was still under construction when the whole world went to hell. It is here I've remained amongst the dead and the decay, spending my time in solitude, unable to return to the surface. Resources have steadily diminished over the past years, and my lighter and the fuel it holds serve as my final source of warmth and light. These tunnels are no safe place, I assure you. I have had many an encounter with strange beasts, unimaginable creatures who lurk in the darkness, who wait for your senses to dull for many hours of weary travel before claiming you for the next meal. But the monsters are not the only hardships I must face here. We have to scavenge here just to survive, and while oftentimes I will find nothing, sometimes I might just receive something in return for my efforts. Today I found a headlamp, dusty and cracked, but still functional, as well as a box of matches. This will prove useful to me back at my shelter. I grieve for my family, for the friends I have lost in this hell. I have used the matches to light the candles, to honor my dead family. It might seem odd to some, but even in these dark times, one would put together a shrine for their fall, whether they be blood or common. But it is not so odd, in fact, for it is simply in our nature to pay tribute to our dead. But I try not to focus on the negatives here. The light in the tunnel gives one time to think, so the solution is to keep busy. I look around at my little home here that I have made myself in the tunnel, and while it is not what one would call clean or tidy, it has a surprisingly cozy feel to it, like no other place can give. It is not well lit, save for a few candles and my new headlamp. <laughs> in fact, the flicker of the candles is enough light to warm my soul and keep myself motivated. In my spare time, I like to type with the typewriter I had found the previous year. I like doubt anyone will read about my tale should they find my home on a tangent. I still find it important to retain my ability to read and write, in an attempt to preserve what education I had received before the war. When I do spend much of my time reading, writing, and rereading my work, I particularly like to read this one book I stumbled across called Metro 2033. It, funny enough, reflects my lifestyle and situation quite well. When I'm all tired out and I'm not in the mood to do any more with the book or my typewriter, I tend to just sit there, looking over my surroundings, and feel fortunate to be alive and to have some items to occupy my time with, despite the circumstances. There's actually a lot to do, even though I do not have school or a job, like modifying and maintaining my firearms, of which I have two. First, I clean and check the ammunition in my pistol, which I modified to have a laser sight. After further cleaning of the pistol, I make sure that the sights are still lined up properly. Usually, after I finish with my pistol, I work on my rifle. It is bolt action and quite effective at killing the monsters that hunt here. It is fun to shoot, but painful to reload. On top of that, the ammunition is far and few, and I only have about 8 shots left in it, so I have to be careful. You may not believe me, but I also kid around with myself quite a bit. I tended to be the silly kid growing up, and still am, although there's not much to laugh about these days. Still, I try to be optimistic, and I usually goof around with my lighter, trying to get the damn thing lit. This can take a bit sometimes, and it's fun to just mess around with it. I've also got these really cool binoculars, too, and they are pretty fun to look through, even if I usually can't see anything at the time. Sometimes I pretend to shoot things, act like a child, for lack of anybody telling me to know better. When I decide to start goofing with pretend guns, I'll sometimes waste ammunition on my surroundings, passing the time trying to keep the board on my bay. I don't do it that often, so I'm not too wasteful. After all the fun and games, though, I'm still admittedly very sad to be on my own, without anyone to love or to love me back. 
I lost everything from the war. And now there isn't much point. It is pretty much just been survived because I have to. But the truth is, I don't have to, and I'm getting sick of this life I'm forced to live. I've typed out my life story on paper, so if anyone ever finds me, I will have something for them to know me by. I have decided on this. I'm going to go join my family now. Farewell, friends.